Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film, Ashima Project. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a group of five friends venturing inside an abandoned building. They are aspiring filmmakers and came there to catch paranormal activity on camera. The group finds the phrase, you will die, written on a wall in red paint. The room itself was the site of a vicious murder, and the burn marks around the room indicate that the place was set on fire too. The undisputed leader of the group, Playboy, pans the video camera across the room as the four other friends crowd behind him. They all see a woman's face flash on the screen for a second, and they shout in shock. Sure enough, when Playboy lowers the camera, there is a ghost of a girl with long dark hair and blood stains all over her body standing in the corner of the room. Terrified, the group quickly run out of the room as fast as they can. The scene freezes, and it is revealed that the events being shown are part of the footage the group submitted to a producer. He definitely thinks that what they caught on camera is promising, and he tells the friends that he will contact them later. The group leaves the producer's office, feeling dejected. He's not the first producer they pitched their idea to, and they all gave the same vague answer. The friends complain about their film degrees and tuition fees going to waste, and Playboy suggests that they just upload their footage online to drum up interest. That night, Playboy's girlfriend Nan is mulling over his suggestion of posting the video on the internet. Playboy convinces her to go ahead, and she leaves the room to take a shower after she uploads the video. Left on the bed, Playboy notices someone walking along the hallway across the room in his peripheral vision. He thinks it was his girlfriend, but her emerging from the bathroom on the opposite side of the room quickly confirms it was someone else. His eyes widen in disbelief, and he looks at the hallway once more, but there's no one there. Meanwhile, their camera friend, named Camera Boy, sees the uploaded video and watches it in his own apartment. The footage shows that after they ran out of the haunted room, Nam was freaking out because someone had touched her shoulder. In the distance, the ghost's face is illuminated by a white light. The video becomes a viral sensation and gains 190,000 views in just a week. The group celebrates their success, and they see that a blogger who specializes in paranormal activity has commented on their video. Camera Boy also receives a call and finds out that he got the VJ internship position he applied for. Meanwhile, the rest of his friends meet with the blogger. The blogger reveals that his team is actually working on a similar documentary. It will be filmed on the haunted island of Hashima, off the coast of Japan. The remote island has a reputation for being extremely haunted, and the blogger wants to sponsor Playboy's team to film the documentary there. Playboy meets with his regular debtor. He likes betting on games, but he's been losing money. He assures the debtor that he can pay off his debts soon. Their video hits over a million views, and the group sits down to discuss the blogger's offer. Camera Boy refuses to go, since he has his internship. But one of the blogger's conditions is that Playboy's whole team has to come. Eventually, Camera Boy says yes. The group excitedly starts their journey and flies to Japan. If they do well in the Hashima project, they can choose the location of their next sponsored shoot. When they land, they are greeted by their tour guide. On the bus, the tour guide asks them why they chose the deserted Hashima Island. Playboy explains that they're shooting a documentary, and the tour guide tells them more about the island's history. It sits silent and empty, with gray and dilapidated buildings, but it didn't used to be this way. Hashima was originally a thriving island, but when its coal mine closed down in 1974, the community living there fled for a better life. Later on, the friends visit some of the tourist spots in a nearby city, and they have a good time. Afterward, they travel to their hotel near the port. They'll spend the night there before taking a boat to Hashima. Playboy asks the tour guide why they can't just directly go to the island, and the guide replies that no boats go to the island after dark. The boys check in at the hotel, while Nan and the girl Beauty go to the beach to take pictures. Playboy and Camera Boy encounter a pretty Japanese girl wearing a kimono in the hallway, and she shyly smiles at them. The other friend, Dog, follows the two girls to the beach like a dog, and he glimpses a girl in a white kimono by the rocks. In the distance, the austere Hashima Island can be seen on the horizon. That night, Camera Boy tosses and turns in his sleep, and a ghost of a girl creeps up under his blanket. He frees in horror, as the girl mutters some Japanese words. Playboy wakes up and steps outside his hotel room. He sees Camera Boy walking inside his own room, with the cute Japanese girl they saw earlier. He assumes that the two are hooking up, and he quickly goes back inside and peeks at the vent that connects to Camera Boy's room. Playboy sees the two of them naked, and gets his video camera to film them. However, the girl turns and stares directly at him through the vent. When he peeks again, Camera Boy is alone on his bed, and the girl suddenly pops up at the vent. Her face is now gray, and her eyes red, and she's uttering words in Japanese too. The next thing Playboy knows, he wakes up the next morning, 
He gets dressed and goes down to the lobby to meet his friends. Camera boy sees a portrait of a Japanese girl and recognizes her as the woman wearing a kimono that they saw last night. Playboy confronts him and says that he saw the two of them together. But camera boy just dismisses his claims and thinks that Playboy is joking. Playboy then asks the tour guide who the girl in the picture is. The tour guide asks the hotel concierge and tells them that the girl is Miko, the daughter of the hotel owner. She also died years ago. But camera boy argues that they saw her just last night and says that the tour guide must just be trying to scare them. But the tour guide really is telling the truth. She was in love with a boy and he promised her that he will marry her at Hashima Island. However, the boy went to the mainland to find work and never returned. Heartbroken, Miko waited for her lover. Eventually, she got sick and died. Ever since then, a curse hangs upon the island. Everyone who goes there experiences unfortunate events. The group gets on a boat and travels to Hashima. They arrive there and marvel at how desolate and run down the whole island is. They start setting up their equipment, and Beauty suggests that they pay respect to the spirits on the island before they film. Nan answers that they're Japanese ghosts anyway, and they wouldn't understand their prayers. The group goes to the spot where Miko died, and their tour guide stays behind because he is scared. One wall in the apartment is completely covered in Japanese writing. Since they're tied, they do not understand what was written, but they guess that these were the names of all the people who died here. Playboy writes his own name on the wall, then dogs and beauties. But right then, he gets a strange feeling and hears a Japanese woman speaking. His girlfriend berates him for adding names to a wall for dead people but he answers that he's just having fun. They decide to go to the top of the abandoned building. Once again, the tour guide is too scared to go with them. The top floor is full of apartments, with the furniture still inside. The rule is that they can't touch any of the items since they belong to dead people. Meanwhile, Dog and the two girls are exploring a different room, sniffing like a dog. Nan senses something strange and begs the others to leave the room with her. They regroup outside and decide that they should continue shooting more footage inside Miko's building. The tour guide warns them against doing this, but they just chalk it up to him being superstitious. The sun is setting soon, and the group is still exploring the ruins. Playboy sees a dusty vase with a framed photo beside it. He rubs the dust away and sees that it's a picture of Miko. He remembers the story that when Miko died, her father kept her ashes and her engagement ring together. He returns the frame, but he gets surprised and knocks the vase down. The ashes blow away in the wind and get in his eyes. Playboy notices the ring in the middle of the broken pieces, so he pockets the ring secretly before his friends get to him. Camera Boy is alarmed and shares an old belief that if you get a dead person's ashes in your eyes, you will get the ability to see spirits. Yumi picks up the ashes and throws them out the window, hoping that Miko could be in peace, but the wind blows the ashes back inside and they get into their eyes too. Suddenly, the whole group begins seeing a vision of an old hospital and a man strapped to a gurney. Yumi freaks out and an earthquake erupts. They hurriedly try to escape the collapsing building. A couple of times, they almost get hit by falling debris, but the group manages to get outside safely. They leave the island in silence, traumatized by what happened. The friends return to Thailand, and Playboy gets to work on editing the footage they got. The rest of the group meets at their favorite restaurant. The owner sits down with them and reveals that he used to be a producer for a ghost show too, but his crew started dying one by one, and he left the profession behind. He had rubbed graveyard dirt on his eyes, so he can catch ghosts better, and now he sees ghosts everywhere. Later that night, Playboy answers a knock on the door. He looks at the peephole and sees that it's his debtor and a couple of goons with him. Since he does not have the money yet, he stays quiet and pretends that he is not at home. The debtor writes a message on a piece of paper, saying that he'll come back again soon to collect what he is owed. On the other side, Camera Boy can't take his mind off of Miko and the ill-fated Hashima Island. He stays up late researching it, and when he does finally fall asleep, Miko is right beside him in bed. The next day, Playboy reviews the footage. He's horrified to see someone coming up behind him in the reflection of his laptop screen. The figure claws at his head with grimy fingers. The next morning, they discover that all the footage from Camera Boy's camera had been damaged. Playboy is immediately angry and blames Camera Boy for being an irresponsible cameraman. But Camera Boy swears that the footage was fine when he checked his camera. Playboy's girlfriend urges him to calm down and think rationally. But Playboy is concerned since they already took the blogger's money and now they have nothing to show for it. The group meets, and Playboy is still pissed about what happened, and talks to Camera Boy rudely. However, Camera Boy sees the ring that Playboy is wearing on his finger, and recognizes it as Miko's engagement ring, which was hidden inside her urn. According to an old story, once a thief stole Miko's ring too, but she followed him and haunted him, until he returned the ring. The same thing is happening to Playboy, which explains why he's been having nightmares recently. Playboy tries to take off the ring, but it's now stuck on his finger. 
Later at his job, Camera Boy messes up and gets fired by his boss. He finds himself alone at the station with the lights all closed. Suddenly, Miko's ghost attacks him in the darkness. He fights her off, and she disappears. Meanwhile, Playboy is played by more nightmares about the island, and he even sees a horrifying vision of Miko's ghost. He wakes up and tries to get the ring off his finger, but it still doesn't budge. He uses a pair of scissors to pry it off, but cuts his own finger off instead. Playboy rises in pain, but at least the ring is now removed from his body. Yuni visits Playboy's apartment in the middle of the night. She is distraught because they have been having a secret affair behind Nan's back. She wants Playboy to choose her, but he will never leave his girlfriend. They are interrupted by the debtor and his two goons, coming to collect his payment. Playboy gestures for Beauty to hide in the bedroom, and then he hides in the bathroom. The debtor enters the bedroom and sees Beauty's sexy body there. So he assaults her sexually, while his men lock Playboy in the bathroom. After he's done, he finds the ring on the table and steals it. He then encounters Nan in the lobby of the building. Nan goes up and runs into Beauty, who left Playboy's apartment in tears. She asks her friend what happened, but Beauty refuses to speak. Nan realizes that the debtor did it to her friend, and she confronts Playboy about why he let that happen. He is crying and won't answer her. Fed up and angry, Nan leaves him alone. Downstairs, the debtor is lounging in his car, and someone in a motorcycle stops in front of him and shoots him. The ring then magically appears back on Playboy's table. Meanwhile, Nan meets with Dog and Camera Boy to make sense of what happened. Camera Boy shows her a picture of Miko's ring, and asks if it's the same ring that Playboy is wearing. Beauty texts Nan, and says she's sorry. Beauty is sobbing in front of her dresser mirror, however, she does not notice that her reflection is smiling, instead of crying. The bathroom door slowly swings open, and she curiously goes inside. She yanks open the shower curtain, and behind it is Miko. She screams out loud and runs out into the hallway. But now Miko is in front of her, wearing her white kimono. She turns right and heads up to the rooftop. Nan and the others rush to Beauty's apartment to look for her. They eventually find her on the rooftop and about to jump off the ledge, but they are too late. She jumps off and falls to her death. Dog is racked by grief and angrily storms to his bedroom when he gets home. Camera Boy and Nan are in a taxi on the way home. The vehicle stops before a train track, and the radio goes haywire. They see Miko waiting for them on the other side of the track. Dog's mom is worried about him and calls Camera Boy for help. He locks himself in the bathroom and starts experiencing pain in his ear. Insects begin crawling out of it and every other orifice in his body. Miko comes and pries his jaw open, killing him brutally. Camera Boy and Nan arrive at Dog's home and are once again too late. They go to Playboy and tell him they believe that the island has cursed them all. However, Playboy is in denial. Nan is tired of him being a coward, so she and Camera Boy leave. They review the footage from Playboy's camera and discover something horrifying. Camera Boy frantically calls the tour guide, but he does not answer. They pack their bags, planning to go back to Hashima, and so they go to Playboy's apartment to pick him up. However, the apartment is empty. Playboy has already flown back to Hashima. He throws the ring to the ground and begs for Miko to end his misery. He then stumbles upon the same secret that Nan and Camera Boy discovered. It turns out that Playboy died the day they went to the island. While running during the earthquake, the floor beneath him collapsed, and he fell below. Nan and Camera Boy saw his corpse in the rubble when they were looking at the footage. This exactly happened, because Playboy had jokingly written his, dogs, and beauty's names on the wall of the dead. Nan sees a message from the producer earlier in the film on Playboy's phone. He declares that their whole team has been accepted into the company. The movie ends with Nan and Camera Boy comforting each other as they mourn their lost friends. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.